Today I'm going to explain the movie SWAT, released in the year 2003. The movie starts and we're taken to Los Angeles, where the police department officers engaged in a violent shootout with four masked bank robbers who have held up a bank in Lincoln Heights. We see helicopters hovering over the bank, trying to put down the robbers. Some police officers get shot down too, while the people in the bank are horrified as they're stuck between the deadly shootout between the two forces. We then go on to see that two of the robbers are in the bank holding hostages while the other two are engaging the cops with AK-47 automatic rifles and full body armors. Being only armed with pistols, the police are hopelessly outmatched. With all other weaponry failing, the officers on scene call for the special weapons and tactics unit we call SWAT. The SWAT unit arrives, some via helicopter and others on a huge SWAT truck. The other police officers are relieved to see help. From the helicopter, one of the SWAT officers named Jim Street and Brian Gamble rappel down with two other men onto the roof of the bank and tunnel their way down to the storeroom next to the main lobby. We then see that a couple of SWAT snipers are deployed to the roof of a building across Jim and a third team approaches from the ground. The shootout goes on for a long time and the people keep getting killed. While Jim and Gamble are entering the bank, one of the two gunmen outside tries to flee in a getaway car but is promptly taken out by a sniper with a single round to the head. The other gunman continues to engage the police, but is taken out by the ground unit. As the two remaining robbers inside are starting to panic, the ground unit sends a secure phone and a SWAT negotiator attempts to negotiate the release of hostages. As the negotiator tries to make a deal with the robbers, Lieutenant Greg Velasquez calls for his team inside the bank to hold and stay where they are. Gamble ignores the order and drops into the storeroom anyway, while Jim is forced to follow him. Gamble then sneaks into the back of the main lobby and gets in position to shoot down the robbers, all the while ignoring several calls from his lieutenant. One of the hostage takers, getting more and more nervous, calls a woman, puts a pistol to her head, and prepares to execute her. With seconds to make a decision, Gamble shoots the robber down through the woman's shoulder, wounding her in the process, but effectively killing the robber. The last gunman is then taken out by Jim, and the standoff is over. Jim attends to the woman and calls for an ambulance. Gamble asks him if she will be okay, to which Jim impatiently replies he is not a doctor. The way he talks to him, it is clear that he is mad at him. The scene changes, and we see two of them at the precinct. They seem tense. One of their colleagues comes to them and tells them not to worry about whatever they say in there, as they were heroes out there. They are called in, and Captain Thomas Fuller is furious at Jim and Gamble for their reckless actions in the bank, especially since the hostage they wounded is now suing the LAPD for negligence. Gamble goes on to say that if they had not done that, that woman would have been dead by now, and they just get two seconds to make a decision, so this is what they did. Fuller orders them off the SWAT division, but Lieutenant Velasquez intervenes and asks that, while off the team, they remain in the division so they can eventually get a chance to get their jobs back. He also goes on to add that they are two of the best they've got, so they should not let go of them just like that. Fuller agrees and relegates them to cage duty, a degrading position involving the maintenance and distribution of weapons and accessories to other officers. Gamble is insulted, and he's extremely pissed because he thinks that they've done the right thing. He loses his control when Fuller further insults him and goes on to advance toward him to hit him, but he is held off by the other officers. He then storms off in anger. When Jim hesitates, Fuller has a private conversation with him where he offers him a chance to get back on the team right away if Jim agrees to rat out Gamble for recklessness. Jim, however, goes on to tell him that Gamble is a good cop, but the superior officer is adamant at putting an end to his career. He tells Jim that Gamble is a bad influence on the other officers, so he should be put off. While Gamble is packing his bag, having decided to quit, he and Jim get into an argument when Jim goes on to reveal that he agrees with Fuller that Gamble was reckless out there and refuses to follow his partner in quitting. Gamble goes on to say that Jim does not have the balls to quit, so he's going to keep being his bitch. Gamble then goes on to understand that Jim might have ratted him out and shoves him into the mirror before packing his bag and storming out of there. Six months have gone by, and we see Jim on the beach where he's working out. He still seems to be in great shape despite the fact that he's still in the gun cage, performing menial tasks for other police officers and still waiting for a chance to get back on the field. 
One day, veteran Sergeant Dan Hondo Harrelson comes to Precinct and asks Jim to fix his customized M4 rifle. Jim goes on to note the custom job and is impressed. Hondo meets with Velasquez. In the wake of a number of scathing articles criticizing the LAPD, the chief of police wants to reform the department. Velasquez goes on to say that he wants Hondo to form a new SWAT unit for him to command. Velasquez then offers Hondo two of his own officers, T.J. McCabe and Michael Boxer. Hondo accepts them and decides to pick out three more candidates from the personnel files. The only problem is, Captain Fuller will have the final say on who goes into this new unit. Jim then goes on to work diligently on Hondo's weapon, and that day when he goes home, he finds his girlfriend trying to move out of their apartment before he comes back. When he confronts her, she tells him that the things between them are not good anymore, and Jim hasn't been the same since he was taken off the SWAT team. Jim is heartbroken, and he is unable to find any words to express how he feels. They come close, and she tries to kiss him one last time. He, however, stops her, and she then goes on to thank him for everything before leaving. During his time in the cage, we see that Jim has invented a new piece of equipment that he plans to patent to law enforcement elsewhere. It is a gigantic hook and chain designed to take down walls or barricades and end hostile standoffs, which he calls the key to the city. As he's explaining his invention to his gun cage partner, named Gus, Hondo shows up. He's there to get his gun back from Jim, and appreciates Jim's idea, and he's also impressed by Jim's work on it, as Jim has made many improvements in his weapon, then goes on to take some of the officers out for target practice on the firing range. The showy TJ manages to outshoot Hondo, but Hondo bets $200 that Jim, who's testing weapons on his own, can beat McCabe. TJ is overconfident, and he goes on to accept the challenge. They then engage in a shooting competition, and Jim, of course, ends up beating TJ. Everyone out there is surprised by his shooting skills, but Hondo is not surprised, because he already thinks highly of the man. On the other hand, a French mobster named Alex arrives at Los Angeles International Airport and heads out into the city. It's revealed that he's there to visit his uncle's favorite restaurant as a birthday surprise to the man, but in reality, he's there because he has to settle a score with him, as he just got to learn that his uncle has been stealing money from the family for some time. When he gets to the restaurant, he right away kills his uncle by slitting his throat, and then he hits the road, only to be pulled over by motorcycle cops for a broken taillight. Much to his bad luck, the car Alex is driving belongs to his uncle, and there's an arrest warrant out for him. The officers detain Alex for questioning and verification of his identity. Even attempts to use bribery, but it does not work. In the meantime, Hondo recruits Jim as his driver for the day in order to go on a SWAT team recruitment run. While in the car, Hondo reveals he was a Marine and a combat trainer before, while Jim was a Navy SEAL. When they get there, they first investigate an officer named Deke, whom they find in the middle of a foot pursuit with a suspect. Hondo and Jim intervene and end the pursuit, angering Deke, who wanted to do it alone. But he soon softens up when Hondo reveals he's from SWAT and offers Deke to study at SWAT school. The two then visit another candidate, who makes a bad first impression on Hondo, by being a vegetarian and being too polite and too much of a stickler to last long in Hondo's unit. They then move on to a Metro police officer named Chris Sanchez, who has apparently applied and qualified several times for SWAT, but keeps getting turned down. Jim notes that Sanchez has several misconduct grievances from suspects filed with internal affairs. They locate Officer Sanchez at a local ER. They find Sanchez's partner keeping watch over a Latino thug who's in a wheelchair with multiple bruises on his face. Hondo asks if Sanchez did this on his own, which his partner confirms that he did. Hondo then meets with Sanchez, and it turns out that Officer Sanchez is actually a girl, as they find out that Chris is actually short for Christina. Hondo realizes that Fuller has likely kept Sanchez off the SWAT roster because she's a woman, and simply has used the misconduct complaints as an excuse to do so. Sanchez tells Hondo that most of the charges against her have been filed because resisting violent male perps couldn't deal with the fact that they were manhandled by a woman. Hondo is impressed by her macho attitude, and right away goes on to invite her to join his team. When they make their way back to headquarters, Jim is frustrated, and he right away asks Hondo if he's planning on toying with him for another day, or he's actually going to tell him why he took him on this recruitment run. 
Hondo asks Jim if he wants to fill the last spot on the team. Jim hesitates when he thinks about it, because he's not sure if Fuller is going to allow him to go out on the fields after what happened with him and Gamble a few months ago. Hondo, however, tells him to join his team. Hondo then goes on to meet Fuller, and gives him the list, but he of course rejects both Sanchez and Jim. However, Hondo also refuses to back down. Fuller then makes a compromise. He says that he will accept the group as is for now, but should they fail the preliminary trials needed for SWAT, then Sanchez goes back to her subway routine, and Jim and Hondo will both be taken off the force. Hondo agrees, confident his new team is up for the challenge. After a few days, the time has come for the team's final evaluation. Fuller goes on to set up a hostage situation for the team to test them. He says that the team will have to infiltrate an airplane taken over by terrorists. They will have to take back control of the aircraft and take out all six hijackers within eight minutes. When Jim looks over the plane's schematics, he goes on to note that there's an alternative entry point to the plane that no one will expect. It is a tiny elevator shaft meant for food trays, which no man could fit in. But their team actually has what no other team has, Sanchez, and she right away jumps at the chance to break Fuller's heart. They sneak onto the plane and take out all six hijackers, although TJ takes a hit that would have been fatal had it been real. Despite this, the new team sets a new course record, and Fuller is of course annoyed. Time goes by just like that, and Hondo's team is ready now. One day they learn that Alex has been captured by the police, and he's to be transferred to another location, so they have asked for Hondo and his team's assistance just in case. When he's being transferred, Alex's associates, disguised as LAPD officers, attempt to break him out, killing two sheriff's deputies. Hondo's team manages to arrive in time to kill the gunman and recapture Alex. As reporters swarm the team, as reporters swarm the team, Alex announces to the cameras that he's willing to offer $100 million to whoever's able to break him out, which draws the attention of criminals across the city. The LAPD prepare to transfer Alex into federal custody by air, but are unable to escape before Gamble shoots down the helicopter. The police send out a large convoy, which is ambushed by gang members, but discovered to be a decoy for Hondo's team, who transport Alex in two SUVs. McCabe reveals himself to be in league with Gamble, who critically wounds Boxer and escapes with Alex and McCabe to the subway, where they hijack a subway car and flee through the sewers as the SWAT team gives chase. Fuller then sends all available units to Hawthorne Airport to prevent Alex from escaping by plane. Hondo's team commandeers a limousine to reach the airport, but realizes that Gamble has a private plane which will land on the 6th Gym Bridge to fly the criminals out of the country. Preparing to take off, the plane is intercepted by the SWAT team. Gamble's men are killed, Sanchez is wounded, while Kay arrests Alex, and Hondo confronts McCabe, who commits suicide. Jim pursues Gamble to the rail yard under the bridge, where they fight hand to hand until Gamble is knocked under a passing train and killed. Fuller and the rest of the LAPD arrive, and Hondo's team delivers Alex to federal prison. As the team drives back to Los Angeles, they receive a report of an armed robbery in progress, to which Hondo readies his team, and with that, the movie comes to an end. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.